Welcome back, everybody. Time for some more Victory at Sea Pacific. We're going to pick up right where we left off. If you haven't seen the uh, episodes up to this point, there's a link in the description. It'll take you back to episode one where we all began with this. It is now June of 1942, right about the time that historically the battle for Midway took place. But we have already won the battle for Midway. We've taken Wake and Marshall Islands. Our next target is the Gilbert Islands. We're in the process of launching our raid and then our conquest of those islands. And then the big one right here. This is a major port. That's going to be a huge step in the process of uh, hopefully moving on the Solomons. The Battle of Guadalcanal was fought down here in the fall uh, of 1942. So this is going to be a big part of our march forward. We need to relieve the pressure on our allies in Australia who've actually lost the port of Darwin in the north part of Australia. So we've got to start taking it to the Japanese. While I'm at it, we have a new patron, John, who has requested his name for his destroyer, and he's requested the name the USS William C. Miller. His uh, it was an Everts class destroyer historically, and his wife's grandfather served on it in the Pacific during World War II. So we're uh, proud to name the William C. Miller in his wife's grandfather's honor. Thank you, John, for your support, and glad to be able to get you that battleship or that uh, destroyer. Let's go ahead over to Pearl Harbor, where we currently have no ships that are being built. We've got uh, a number of ships docked there that have been completed, so we're going to get them going. But we've got 1,400 war bonds at the moment. Uh, and a bunch of new ships available to us. The Cleveland class light cruiser. The USS Atlanta, which I currently have in my fleet. The original Atlanta was an Atlanta class cruiser. That one was sunk in November 1942 at the Battle of Guadalcanal. I have many times mentioned my cousin, Marion Greenhill, who was a gunner's mate on that Atlanta who died that day. Uh, in 1943, there was a new USS Atlanta, and that was a Cleveland-class light destroyer, so or light cruiser. We're going to go ahead and start building a few of those, and we will also upgrade them. Let's see what else we've got available to us, though. Um, Portland-class cruiser. Do we have any... We only have a few more ships that we have to unlock. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe some smaller, quicker to build aircraft carriers that we could build in addition to the ones that we've already got. So let me think about that for a bit. So an independence uh, class light carrier. It's uh, you know it's kind of like an escort carrier. It's not meant to really bear the brunt of things, but it certainly helps to have. So we'll get one of those built. We can't build the big carriers there at Pearl Harbor. Uh, we've got to go back over to San Diego, for example, to build that. We've got a North Carolina battleship in the works. Uh, so you can see here, this is probably Essex-class carrier here. That's the only one we haven't unlocked yet. Um, we could build another Lexington-class carrier. I think I'll probably go ahead and do that. You can see uh, they can have 20 squadrons uh, of planes there. Uh, we'll upgrade all of that for sure. And then we'll kind of hang tight with the 374 that I've got left. One of the other things, you can see a lot of my further out areas have low supply. Uh, so I feel like what we've got to do is we've got to start building some more cargo ships uh, so that we can deal with some of that supply issue. So we've got some tankers being built uh, here. Let's go ahead and take a look at what else we've got. We've got to find the cargo ships and build those. There we go, Liberty class cargo ship. Uh, so let's go ahead and build some of those. Start relieving the pressure on some of these areas. And that's going to pretty well take up all the war bonds I have left. All right, so we've got torpedo bombers that started coming at carrier task force charlie outside the marshall islands which tells me there's another carrier out here i think we already knew that but just in an abundance of caution we're going to go ahead and start preparing for that we're heading into the marshall Islands so we can get repaired and refit with the uh the planes that i've lost uh taking a look here there's two battleships out there up there i'd very much like to go after them as well looks like they're headed toward wake which is really interesting uh we do have a carrier task force at Wake, I believe. Now there's Alpha right there. They're heading toward Tarawa. We might have to take a little 
detour to deal with these battleships. Okay, so Carrier Task Force Charlie has engaged the enemy near the Marshall Islands. Let's take a look at that. Five torpedo boats. Not entirely sure what they're going to hope to accomplish. That must have been originally the defense force for the Marshall Islands, so I'm really not too concerned about that. What I was about to say before that popped up was um, we don't have anything currently at Wake Island other than their defense craft, which we are currently working on. Uh, and I actually want to get, actually, I think we are in the process of upgrading those. Uh, so we're upgrading our B-17s to B-24s. And uh, looks like we're getting some, some new planes there. Uh, but I'm also sending Carrier Task Force Alpha, which uh, has the Yuana Buyer, the Pillars of, Pillar of Autumn, uh, over to intercept and destroy these two battleships before they get to Wake Island. On top of that, Task Force 22 at Midway, which is my battle battleship task force that has the Colorado, the Tennessee, the Maryland, um, we're sending them to Wake Island, and they're going to finish their um, refueling at Wake. They should have enough fuel to get there. Uh, I've got the Hornet Squadron leaving Pearl, and they're headed to Midway. They're going to kind of take over the defense of Midway. Uh, that's his Hornet task, Hornet task Force here. It's got the Hornet, the Steubenville, the Oakland, the Moffat, the Winslow. Uh, and then I've got a number of other task forces headed toward Pearl. They'll refuel, and then they'll head out to their assignments from there. All right. We've got a whole mess of dive bombers heading toward these two battleships. And I feel like we're going to make quick work of them. They're just within range. So we don't even actually have them spotted yet we just know the location but pretty quickly we should there they are the one's already damaged here's the other one up here they're both actually somewhat damaged already should make pretty quick work of this guy Beautiful. I've got a whole lot more dive bombers coming this way. So looks like everybody went after the first the first battleship. He's toast. Whoever's left can come after this one. Yeah, it looks like that was everybody. So maybe we should have spread things out a little better, but We'll come back for the second one without a tro any trouble. He has no, he's got a spotter flight and that's it. He's got no real protection whatsoever from the air. So we're gonna go ahead and just watch the satisfaction of seeing a Japanese battleship go beneath the surface. And we'll come back for the second one soon enough. Oh, hey, we just spotted a really juicy target. I sent out Carrier Task Force Charlie. Uh, that's got the Yorktown and the Enterprise. Uh, we were going to go hunting for that other carrier uh, that's out here somewhere, but lo and behold, there are 10 cargo ships, an oil tanker, an ammunition ship, and two destroyers headed toward Macon and uh, Tarawa. I think we need to take them out. That's way too juicy a target not to jump all over right now. So a bunch of squadrons heading that way while we recover our dive bombers at Carrier Task Force Alpha and head for that second battleship. Although Wake could probably just as easily do this themselves. I'm not sure if they've got... They do have planes. They've got plenty of planes to take care of business. So maybe we'll just tell Wake to deal with these guys. They've only got, they've got a B-24 level bomber and three Douglas dive bombers. But that might be enough to do this. Go get them. All right, so we're going to, the lead on this attack is going to be 21 torpedo bombers, followed by a series of dive bombers and then more that just took off. So uh, whatever we don't get in the first batch, we will certainly get with the rest. But let's go ahead and take a look at the combat. 
All right, so here's our devastators coming in. We're just starting to spot all of these ships. So what I want to do is just kind of make sure that we're spreading out the wealth a little bit here. So I'll spread out each of these to hit different targets, knowing that we're not going to probably hit them all. Especially with torpedo ships, or torpedo planes. And of course out here are also some destroyers. But we've also got those flights of dive bombers coming in and hopefully by daylight we get a glimpse of those destroyers. And of course you can see there are a bunch more now. Well, let's go ahead and keep hitting them. And we'll probably have to make several rounds to go after all of them. All right, torpedoes in the water. A lot of ships. Clearly not going to get them all. Go ahead and speed this up a little bit. I think we got this guy. There's the first one. Yeah, one torpedo should be more than enough to take out these cargo ships. This guy somehow missed every single one of them. There's a second one. Just barely missed this guy here, but I think one of these other torpedoes might get him. Oh man, we got lucky. Or he got lucky, I should say. Man, all of that and I got two. Two lousy cargo ships. Now, granted, it's nighttime, and those torpedoes are terrible anyway. We're going to come back. Uh, we're just going to barely miss that guy. We're going to come back with more torpedoes. We're definitely going to get them with the dive bombers. Okay, here come our first dive bombers. And we're going after four more of these cargo ships. Let's see how this works out. Small targets, but hopefully we do okay. We got one. Missed that one. Missed that one. Should have one more coming in. All right, so we got one more, but here it comes. And we missed him too. All right. Well, tiny targets make for difficult ships to hit, but we're going to keep after these guys till we finish them all. This time I'm just going to go ahead and let them do their own thing. We've got a bunch of dive bombers, a bunch of torpedo bombers coming in. We've still got seven cargo ships, an oil tanker, an ammunition ship, and two destroyers left. That's a total of 11 ships. Let's see what's left after they hit them again. Uh, again, we only got one. Mm, those are tough targets. And we got one more, so we're down to nine. So that second round only got 11, or only got two more of the ships. They're tough. Uh, Carrier Task Force Alpha is trying to finish off this other battleship. They've got 23 dive bombers heading in for the task. If that can't get it done, I don't know what can. So we're going to expect this battleship's about to disappear. There he goes. Perfect. 
So now we'll go ahead and let Alpha continue their task of going down toward Macon Atoll. We're going to actually take Tarawa and Macon if we can. So in answer to a question that I had posed earlier, supply convoys, when you create them, they do automatically start working. I created a couple of new supply convoys uh, over on the West Coast, and they have immediately started getting into work. Uh, what I've done is uh, I've gone in and the list of ports and I've started setting supply priorities. Uh, so for example, Wake and Midway and Marshall Islands uh, who are kind of out on the forefront are some of my high priority targets as far as supplies go. And of course, everybody's low on supply, which tells me I'm not doing enough to get supplies out there. So that's why I created those additional convoys. We'll see if that relieves the issue or if we need to continue creating further convoys. Uh, Carrier Task Force Alpha has orders to make an amphibious assault on Macon Atoll and go ahead and take that. Once they've done that, we're going to go ahead and scout nearby Tarawa and take it as well. And right on schedule, the amphibious assault has begun on making a toll. We're going to go ahead and get that going. We launched a bunch of dive bombers to deal with their coastal defenses, and I think that had the desired effect. So this should go pretty quick. All right, well, the first amphibious assault force was actually destroyed, uh, but the second one was able to take that. And now we have the Essex-class carrier available in our large shipyards. Uh, the Curtis Helldiver Dive Bomber is now ready. Torpedo Bomber. Excellent news. I was so glad to get those Essex carriers. Those are the really big ones. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, I don't know what it's going to take to build one of those things, but we're going to find out. We have a Lexington class carrier that's uh, underway already. There's the Essex. Uh, so Essex, 30,800 tons. Uh, they're actually a little smaller than the Lexington, but they're a little more advanced. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get one of those built. You can kind of take a look. The Lexington has a range of 10,000 nautical miles. Lexington has a range of 15,000 nautical miles. It's uh, Lexington has no AA strength of its own. Essex has uh, AA strength of seven. Uh, so there's a lot of things to like about this Essex. So we're going to go ahead and get our first one of those built. Uh, we could actually build two of them, which would be phenomenal. There we go. So while I'm uh, bringing Carrier Task Force Alpha into Macon Atoll so we can get refit and ready to go, I see this British Task Force, four, five destroyers and four cruisers moving up on Tarawa. Uh, which tells me they may be getting ready for a raid themselves. Looks like I sent a fighter over to deal with his spotter. Uh, so we're going to get ready to go here, and then we're going to go ahead and launch a raid on Tarawa. All right, here we go. Carrier Task Force Alpha is going to go ahead and complete the uh, mission that started at Macon Atoll. We're going to launch an amphibious assault. Oh boy, looks like we lost all of our dive bombers doing that on Tarawa. That's bad. But we're just going to let this complete because we can just kind of refit everybody from making a toll if we need. Oh boy, wait a second. We're going to have to enter combat here because I didn't realize that Tarawa was going to be that heavily defended. It looks like they're taking out some of my ships and I wasn't prepared for that. All right, so here's our fleet shelling the defenses at Tarawa. I don't really see them firing back, so I'm not sure what the damage was that was happening to my fleet. New objective, capture Tulagi, capture Guadalcanal. All right. I almost feel bad causing the damage because I'd like to just keep it intact, but I guess we kind of have to do this in order to be able to land safely. I don't actually see my amphibious landing. Oh, they're coming in from this side, that's why. Interesting. Coming in from the opposite side as the fleet. 
It's going to be a nighttime landing. We'll speed this up. That's as fast as it goes. Oh boy. So this first landing might not have the success we'd like it to. He's taken out a lot of these guys. Why are we not destroying his defenses is the question. I've got the HMS Hermione as a battleship. There we go. <laughs> that should make it a little easier. I don't know why that wasn't already happening. Now they can land quietly. I'm still learning how all this works. I'm still learning how to coordinate things, what orders you need to issue, and what you can allow to happen by itself. There we go. So South Dakota class battleships are available. B-25 Mitchell level bombers are available. So always getting new things. Every time we get these XP boxes unlocked by uh, completing tasks, we get new things. As we capture more and more ports, obviously we're gonna need more and more cargo ships to be able to supply them. So I'm gonna go over here to the Mare Island shipyard where nothing is currently being built. And I think we're going to go ahead and get some more cargo ships going. Liberty class. Let's look up at Puget Sound. Our North Carolina class battleship's almost done. San Diego. We've got the two Essex class, class carriers, a Lexington class carrier, and a North Carolina class battleship. So with all those new carriers, we're obviously going to need some more support ships. We've got Cleveland class light cruisers and Independence class light carrier being built. And let's take a look at what we've got now. I want to, I'm not sure which of these I prefer. The Cleveland has a much better range, so I feel like maybe that's the way to go. We'll go ahead and build another one of those. And where's our new carriers? Or our new uh, battleship? Let me go up to Puget Sound. That's the Richelieu. South Dakota is the new one we just built. So that's got a 15,000 nautical mile range. Uh, it takes 117 days to build. Displacement 35 tons, 1,000 tons, 9 16 inch guns. Yes, please. All right, looking at the flight selection of the USS Yorktown, and we've got the ability to upgrade all of our flights. It's going to cost 420 war bonds to do that, uh, but that's definitely worth it. That's going to upgrade all of these various ships that we or planes that we've got here to the latest models. So we'll go ahead and issue that order. It's going to take some time to do that. We'll eventually do that for our other carriers as well. Oh, hey, look at this. That's the one cargo ship left over from that big group that we went after. New supply convoy created at Mare Island. That's good. The more the merrier. We're getting all of our squadrons kind of forwarded out to Wake, Marshall, and the Gilbert Islands. Our current objective that we've been given is to go after Tulagi and Guadalcanal. Um, it looks like there's three subs down there. Some British destroyers right there. I'd really like to go after a truck, but I, I get why this is the next target, and historically that was the, the next target. Uh, so I guess that's probably where we're going to head. So what I think I'm going to do here is I don't want to leave the Marshall Islands without a carrier task force of any kind, uh, just because I don't know what might be coming from over here. I am going to send Wolfpack Charlie out this direction to start scouting. In the meantime, I'm going to separate the Enterprise in Yorktown into separate task forces. Uh, and then I'm going to send Enterprise down to Tarawa. And the combined forces of uh, Enterprise, Pillar of Autumn, you want to buy are those three carriers are going to be what I send out to head toward the Solomon Islands and see what's going on there. 
All right, Pillar of Autumn, you get your upgrades next. 300 war bonds to upgrade all of their flights. Now here's the cool thing about this. When you upgrade all of those, you still have the other ones available. So they can become replacements uh, when I run out, uh, when the other ones are damaged or destroyed. All right, so we've got a lot of cargo ships out there, but we don't have a lot of tankers. And I'm noticing that some of my forward bases don't have fuel. Uh, so that's the next step is as we gain some more war bonds, we're going to um, have to build some of these tankers. They cost a hundred a piece. So it's going to take a little while to get some of those out there. Okay, we have gone ahead and oh, there was an enemy fleet destroyed in the Coral Sea. I'm not sure who did that, but I'm grateful because that's kind of the direction that I'm headed. Um, these cruisers must have done that maybe. I don't know. I don't see anything else in that area, but it could have been anybody, I suppose. So we're headed toward the, the Solomon Islands. We're headed toward Guadalcanal specifically with three carriers in their task force. Uh, let's. What are we seeing here? Uh, these are just these submarines that are over operating in the neighborhood of Wake Island. There's also three destroyers out here. I'm not too worried about that. Um, I am leaving the Gilberts kind of undefended but I have a, a light carrier and two light cruisers in Task Force 33 headed that way. Uh, so they can at least offer some defense and then I can always send folks down from the marshals if something happens. Okay, while we're moving on the Solomons, we do have three destroyers, a cruiser and two light cruisers in the vicinity of Midway. Uh, we have Task Force 32 there, which is the USS Lexington by itself. <laughs> and uh, not much else at the moment. Uh, I don't even think we have anything headed that direction. Um, yeah, so I thought I had more than that. Oh, you know why? Because I have a the Hornet task force is on patrol out of Midway. All right, so Hornet, you're going to go take care of these guys. Yes, launch. And meanwhile, we'll simultaneously send our planes from uh, Lexington. So we've got dive bombers from Lexington coming out from Midway. That'll be followed by dive bombers from the Hornet Task Force. And between all of those, I don't see these ships being able to survive. Okay, here we go. Nighttime attack, so we probably shouldn't accept, uh, expect a real high degree of success. As you can see, so far nobody's landed a hit. Now we might have gotten one on the Ashigara. But it looks like everybody else missed. Hopefully, it, you know, it's so hard to time these attacks because the time changes so quickly. But I'm hoping that by the time, like our B-17, our Avengers get out here, or the attacks from the other side get there, that we start seeing some success. Okay, so here we're watching from the uh, viewpoint of our B-17, and you can actually see the dive bombers coming back in from their run. You can see the Avenger over there. You can see the other Dauntlesses that are about to hit, it appears. I don't know why we've got, we've got a couple Catalinas doing their own thing. Meanwhile, there's also going to be the planes coming in from the other direction. So all told, it'll be interesting to see how this all shapes out. I'm just going to let these guys choose their own targets this time. We'll see who they go after. Going after the closest one, the destroyer. And they're going to miss. Guess I should start maybe choosing the targets for myself but it looks like in the meantime our torpedo plane got in there and also missed destroyers are tough to hit with torpedoes man all right that's all right we've got two carriers going after these guys oh it looks like one of the other torpedoes might have or one of the other ships might have gotten hit by the torpedoes I guess that's it for now. 
Okay, this time it's the uh, the squadron's coming from the Hornet. Let's see if we do any better. Oh boy. I want to slow down the time here. Might not even get a bomb off on this guy. And it missed. Ah, uh, that's frustrating. Let's go ahead and watch the rest of the fleet. Wow, that wasn't even close. There we go. We got a sinking. This has been frustratingly inaccurate so far. I'd like to just take my battleships out there and finish them off, but prefer to do it with planes when possible. All right, so I went ahead and just, I've allowed this to continue. I haven't recorded any more of it. He's down to just the two destroyers now. We'll see if our dive bombers can finish them off. We took out all the cruisers. Now we've got torpedo bombers going in. Got another destroyer. We've got one left. So most of that kamikaze esque attack by the Japanese fleet. There we go. We got them all. So we're going to bring the Hornet Task Force back into Midway now. Uh, you can see we're starting to get some much needed supplies coming out. There's some oil tankers going to deliver to Wake Island. That's going to be important for us because I don't think we have we have no fuel at Wake right now. So that'll be helpful. I really would like to go after these subs. And I've got three destroyers coming toward the Marshall Islands. And I don't know what I have. Uh, we've got Wolfpack Charlie. I don't want to go after destroyers with a Wolfpack, but we do have the Yorktown here. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit them with the Yorktown while we continue to head toward the Solomons with the Enterprise and uh, Carrier Task Force Alpha, which is the uh, Pillar of Autumn and the Yuana Buyer. So I think we'll see what happens with all of that, and then that'll be more than enough for this episode. All right, Yorktown's got 21 dive bombers headed out toward this task force. This might be the first time we see these Curtis Hell Divers in action. I'm not sure. I've got another 21. We've got the torpedo bombers coming up behind them. But let's go ahead and take a look. This might be our first chance to see these new planes in action. I can't remember if we've used them before. No, we definitely have not. That was kind of weird. I'm excited to see how they do. Okay, let's pause. I want to get down there and look at the fleet that we're dealing with. And I'm going to send two squadrons after each of these ships. At least. Beyond that, I'll let them attack whoever. But I want to make sure that we're at least spreading out the attack a little bit. Then again, this has gotten me into trouble before because it seems like we don't damage anybody so maybe I should just have the whole crew go after one to make sure that it gets taken out here we go Oh, 
they dropped them all way in front of him. Uh, I'm going to have to start manually doing this because it seems like they are just terrible at dropping bombs. Look at that. Those all missed. Everybody missed the Akani. I didn't hit anything with that first group. Woefully ineffective. Okay, torpedo bombers. Let's see if they do any better. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do anything with their orders. I'm just gonna let them do their thing. They'll probably all go after the same exact ship. But I guess that probably ensures that we actually hit it if we get enough torpedoes in the water. I don't know. I guess we'll find out here in a second. It's a lot of torpedoes all in one place. I don't know. Watch, he'll still miss all of them. All he has to do is turn this way. Which he's not going to do because apparently he didn't spot them yet. Pretty good spread. I think that'll do the trick. Yes! That's one way to get to get your target out of action. Alright, at least we took out one. And actually the next set of torpedo bombers, the next run took out the rest of them. So that fleet is toast. Alright. So back to the action down here. Actually, let me go ahead and return Yorktown to base for now so we can get those planes repaired. Enterprise is going to get to the Solomons first, so they're going to see what's up. And then we've got Carrier Task Force Alpha behind them. So I'm guessing from what we see here that there's not actually... A Japanese force in the Solomons. So the Japanese continue to go after the um, Aleutian Islands, but honestly I'm not going to worry a whole lot about that. Enterprise Task Force is going to go after Tulagi. We're going to send Carrier Task Force Alpha to deal with Guadalcanal. And I guess since these are neutral ports, we're just going to take them. <laughs> All right. Victory class cargo ship is now available to build at any shipyard. Casablanca cast escort carrier. Uh, the Hellcat. Oh, yes. I've been hoping for those fighters. All right. Let's go take Guadalcanal and then we'll wrap this episode up. All right. While we're doing that, we also have another significantly sized. Japanese task force. Five destroyers, a cruiser, two light cruisers, and a heavy cruiser all headed toward Midway. Uh, but again, I've got three carriers there. I think I've got three carriers there. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, I've got the Lexington. Oh, Lexington and the Hornet, so two. In fact, we'll go ahead just for now and drag Lexington into the Hornet task force just to make it a little easier. Uh, we're eventually going to have to send some uh, additional forces up that direction, I think.